Welcome to Las Vegas' Sam Boyd Stadium, venue for the 2007 Monster Jam World Finals. The greatest lineup in Monster Jam World Finals history has been assembled to determine world champions in head-to-head -head racing and freestyle. 24 drivers have come to participate in the most prestigious event of the year. You know precedent, oh, riddle me that. The rest of y'all know where I'm there, yeah. This is like the Daytona of monster truck racing. We'll probably see over 15, 20,000 of our closest fans here from all over the world. You get fans from every state, six, seven different countries. The show's phenomenal. I mean, it's amazing. It's an honor to be invited to this event. Two words, world finals. It's all or nothing in the world finals, no doubt. Over the next hour, we'll profile the most popular truck and the driver that made it famous. Gravedigger and Dennis Anderson will showcase the most amazing crashes captured on tape and highlight other fan favorites, including Blue Thunder, Bounty Hunter, Monster Mutt, and Tom Mentz in Maximum Destruction. It's a huge event, you know. I've been there every year. I don't even know if anybody else has. I've been in every Las Vegas show they ever had, from number one to now number eight. You won't want to miss the highlights of the racing and freestyle competitions and the crowning of the 2007 World Champions. We'll also look at what the future holds for Monster Jam. But first, let's take a quick ride through the history of the Monster Jam World Finals. Stay with us when Monster Jam continues. We'll celebrate the 25th anniversary of the most popular monster, Grave Digger. CBS Sports Spectacular, Monster Jam, brought to you by Ford and the new F-Series Super Duty, built to work harder for you. Welcome back to Monster Jam on CBS. While there are many great monsters and some incredible drivers behind their wheels, one truck stands out as the fan favorite.
driven by Dennis Anderson, Gravedigger is considered to be the most influential monster of all time. He's awesome. He's fearless. Freestyle's old because of him. Yeah, he's pushed it to a whole nother level. He's what's brought this sport to the level that we're at. It's an honor to be in the same uh, same area as this guy, let alone uh, be a competitor. He's all about the fans. He always has been. Tearing up nuts and bolts and breaking fiberglass. And you fans made that possible for me. You know, whenever he's there, I, I want nothing more than to win. I know he feels the same way. And I know when I'm not there or he's not there, we don't feel like we got a true win. Dennis Anderson started out as a mud bogger with his original Gravedigger in 1981. This truck was a 1952 Ford pickup truck. It was later converted to a 1950 Chevy panel truck. I made up Gravedigger uh, years ago. I had an old truck and it was a piece of junk. I told uh, old Gary Todd, I said, I'll take that junk and I'll dig you a grave. And everybody went, woo! The rich boys come down with their stuff. I had my junk together and I dug them a grave right there in front of everybody. I romped and stomped back and forth through that hole. Nobody could get through it but me with my junk. And, um, and it just kind of kicked off from there, man. Everybody talked about Grave Digger around their little local community there and said, man, that old ragged truck he's got is bad. That thing goes. And it just kind of, um, it just started climbing from there, you know. In the mid 80s, Grave Digger underwent a transformation to become a complete monster truck and first received its spooky black graveyard paint scheme. The first big stadium shows I performed at would be Houston, Texas, and Astrodome. That was a highlight of my career, and that was the best place. It was the biggest dome. I remember walking down in the thing, and you know, I was like, wow, I can't believe it. I finally got to the Astrodome. Dennis gained a reputation early on for his all-or-nothing driving style and quickly became popular at local events. In 1991, Anderson began running on the Monster Jam Tour and debuted his first four-link race truck. Throughout the 1990s, the popularity of the truck exploded and necessitated the creation of a fleet of grave diggers and drivers to satisfy Monster Jam audiences nationally and worldwide. All the other monster truck grave digger drivers, you know, I want them to I want them to hold a certain image. And that image that I want them to hold is, is a good old guy image. You know, they can be they can be cocky and arrogant in their own way, but when it comes to dealing with the fans and and being proud of that truck, I want to be proud of that truck. I want to rock and roll that thing like it's supposed to be rock and roll. The fleet of drivers that I have out there right now are awesome. However, Anderson was still the driver most connected to the truck, and his appearances at shows promoted him as much as Gravedigger. Dennis made it a point to drive harder than other competitors, and it led to his runs being the most anticipated at shows. Every time he gets behind the wheel, he's gonna run it to the end. You know, he's gonna run the wheels off of it. He's gonna tear it up. You know, and, and these people, they support that. They, they buy the T-shirts, they buy the toys. They give him the money to keep tearing those trucks up. So that's why he does it, and we enjoy it. with any sport, competition is taken to a higher level by rivalry. In Monster Jam, that rivalry is definitely Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger versus Tom Mentz and Maximum Destruction. My most memorable moment against Dennis Anderson had to be in the World Finals 2 in Las Vegas when we kept going out there and running into one another's trucks. I mean, that was just an awesome moment. Every sport of motorcycles, cars, any kind of racing saw that turn the whole world on the end to see the two toughest competitors just were bashing into one another's vehicle. Dennis won the inaugural Monster Jam World Finals Freestyle Championship and has scored two World Racing Championships with wins in 2004 and 2006. I'm trying to laugh and keep you crying. I've been out a long time. Wanted this win bad. Said this was my year. Myself. 22 years. I've never won this World Finals, but it feels really good right now, buddy Row. I had that feeling. <laughs> My kids are here, <laughs> and we got it. 
This year, Gravedigger is celebrating its 25th anniversary, and Dennis's sons, Adam and Ryan, are both following in their dad's footsteps. I want my kids to carry on the Gravedigger legacy. Adam's doing an excellent job already. Ryan, he's chomping at the bit. You know, he, he wants to do it now more than he ever has because his brother's doing it. I'm not sure what truck I'm going to have or anything. I just want to make sure that I do get a truck as quick as I can because I'm ready to go now. Definitely try and follow in my dad's footsteps. That's, that's a really big deal. I want to make a name for myself, but also I want to be there for all my dad's fans. And when he does step out of the truck, whenever that may be, I want to be there. I want to be able to fill his shoes. When it comes to Monster Jam, Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger have become the most popular truck in the world today. Coming up next, we'll bring you the racing action and crown the 2007 Monster Jam World Finals champion. Monster Jam has been making waves in terms of corporate America sponsorship with Ford Trucks and Advance Auto as major backers. As a presenting sponsor of Monster Jam, it's important for us to really bring special things to the fans, and that's what Monsters on Main Street is. It's really a promotion that only uh, Built Ford Tough Trucks and Monster Jam could do. It's really the ultimate fan experience. We got a winner! Yes, Involvement with Mattel Toys is the latest of some great ties to this popular sport. Oh, Monster Jam is hugely important to us. Hobbles and Monster Jam is a perfect partnership. It's, it's an event that kids can really get into, and the trucks just lend themselves to a, a toy execution. And all these trucks that have so much personality and character to them, and we're able to bring that to life through our toys. You know, we go to the events like this, and, and we watch the, the dynamics of the trucks that you see at the events and what gets kids excited at Monster Jam, and, and we're bringing that to the kids. We're bringing that to life through, through various toys, all about freestyle. And we're just gonna uh, come out with a whole new exciting line of product in 08. Also new to Monster Jam is Activision and their development of a brand new Monster Jam video game to be released later this year. Fans who chose to double down on Monster Jam action in Vegas got to experience the pit party, driver autograph session, and all its activities in a more intimate environment on Friday. Hey, hey guys, here we are out here at Double Down Pit Party. What's going on here at Double Down is the best fans in the world are here this weekend. They're all getting a bunch of autographs. They're having a good time. They're telling all the drivers exactly what they want to see Saturday night. Right on, man, just chilling out here at the Double Down, having a good time, signing autographs, beating my number one fans out here, man. These people, they're hardcore. They come out here a day early. Hang out with us, get up close and personal, man, it's a blast. If you go to NASCAR, the drivers aren't as friendly. These guys know that their money and their fans are what we're all about, and that's why they come here. All of them just standing out here for hours and hours of their own personal time, you know, dealing with all the kids. This is what it's about. All the autographs on their shirts, they all have a good time. That's why we're all here. To have kids come up and say, we watch you on TV, we TiVo you. You know, we know we know all about you and your brothers that raced before. That's it's a great feeling, and that's you know, pit party for me is just is the best part of it for sure. It's great to see. We went to a baseball game once, and they, they weren't so good with the kids, and these guys are wonderful with them. They they seem to be you know they 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 appreciate the fact that these fans are the ones that uh you know get them where they are and making <laughs> the money. Some of the football, basketball, it's like they can't be bothered anymore. So it's kind of grassroots. Also on hand were some special guests from the Make a Wish Foundation. That was a cool little group from Make-A-Wish, and this is Riley, maybe my little, my good luck charm for the World Finals out here. That's what it's all about, man. These little guys come out, and we just made their day. They get to watch these monsters at Monster Jam. It's going to be a really good deal for these kids. For more information on how to secure Double Down tickets for next year's Monster Jam World Finals, log on to MonsterJamOnline.com. These hardcore fans got to witness the qualifying races. At the end of the night, six-time World Finals competitor Jimmy Creighton in Bounty Hunter won the Double Down Trophy as the number one qualifier with a time of 15.84. This set the bracket for Saturday night's single elimination head-to-head -head racing format, and Jimmy Creighton knew it would be tough to win. 
As far as uh, who's in the other lane, it doesn't matter. I mean, they're all good. I mean, every year in the World Finals, they're all good, and they can all beat you in any, any race. I would prefer to win the racing title right now. I've, I've, won, the, I've won the freestyle championship, uh, and I've been so close to the racing championship, I'm trying to get that monkey off my back. I just quite, can't finish that final round. It's been close, and that wears on you. Whether it's bicycles or beasts, racing is racing, and every driver in Las Vegas wanted the Monster Jam World Finals racing title. As the number one seed, Jimmy Creighton was the first to race in the second round. He was also the first of many explosive upsets. One by one, Air Force Afterburner, Blue Thunder, Brutus, Iron Outlaw, Scarlet Bandit, and Escalade, and Monster Mutt Dalmatian were relegated to the pits. The track in Sam Boyd Stadium is the longest and most technical of the year, a true test to determine a world champion. The trucks are geared up to hit almost 70 miles an hour as they charge down the straights. Then, the driveline brakes spit sparks in protest as they try to slow down the 10,000-pound locomotives. The pressure level went up a notch as the field was cut down to eight. Oh, he broke a driveline in Hot Wheels. Round three saw heartbreaking losses go to Neil Elliott in Hot Wheels, Tom Mentz in Maximum Destruction, Lindsey Wank in Iron Outlaw, and Mark McDonald in Safe Auto Minimizer. It's going to be Pablo Huffaker. Pablo Huffaker is going to the Monster Jam semifinals. After three rounds of great racing, the semis were set. Coming into this event, John Seesock and Batman was clearly on a mission. If I win Vegas, I'm going to cry like a little girl. After the first World Finals, um, I did a show in Connecticut, and a family came up to me and had a bottle of champagne. And uh, they said that uh, we don't care what anybody says, we feel that you're a real world champion. And uh, it's from the O'Connor family in Connecticut. And uh, Mike, I'll tell you what, when I win the World Championship, I'm going to come back and we're going to drink this together. And uh, if I win Vegas, that's first place I'm going in Connecticut. He faced Charlie Pocket in Monster Mutton semi number one. Batman has a truck link lead into the turn. But it's who's going to execute the turn better, and it's going to be John Seesaw. Batman is going to the Monster Jam Racing Championship round. Can you believe it for John Seesaw? Coming through the other side of the bracket was Dennis Anderson piloting Gravedigger. While many of the other drivers struggled with the advanced auto parts lane, Dennis had put on a clinic in controlled aggression for his fellow drivers. In semi two, he ran against Pablo Huffaker and his new truck, Captain's Curse, to claim the other slot in the final. Back, watch the finish line. Oh, what a race! Wow, what a race! Five time world finals competitor John Seesock and Batman then faced the defending Monster Jam world racing champion Dennis Anderson for the 2007 crown. A flawless run was necessary to beat Gravedigger and Seesock delivered. Down Thunder Alley, Digger has a one truck like lead. It will be one of them. It's a five second penalty. Gravedigger has hit the pole. John Seesock, for the first time in his illustrious Monster Jam career, is the world Monster Jam racing champion. And rightfully so. Stay with us. When we return, we'll introduce you to some of the other great personalities that help make up the world of Monster Jam. Welcome back to Sam Boyd Stadium and Monster Jam on CBS. The Monster Jam field of drivers is full of some amazing characters and personalities, each with the skill and guts to wow audiences nationwide week after week. The veteran drivers have witnessed the sport's growth. Monster Jam, Monster Trucks, 
have just come so far. Uh, the technology that we've got in these shocks and our suspension, the drivetrain, the engines we're using now, uh, it's, you know, I've been in it for 18 years and every year it just changes. The motors are getting bigger, the jumps are getting bigger, we're finding the weak spots on the trucks. Now we're fixing them better. So now you can go out there and you can jump in big jumps and not lose spindles like we used to. Yeah, we're not running steel bodies and we're not taking the old factory productive frame and just throwing some big old arched up springs on them anymore. It's a lot of technology. You know, we've got 30 inches of suspension travel on them. It's, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, when we first started, we just would barely clear a set of four cars. And now, I mean, we are jumping over school buses that are jacked up on four foot dirt pads. I mean, the height, more than anything, the trucks have been able to jump so much higher and that's because they'll hold together and take those huge impacts. At the other end of the spectrum are the rookies, hungry to make their mark against the world's best. Fortunately, you know, I was put into a truck that I can go out and push hard and run hard, and because that's the way, I, I know that's what the people want to see, and I want to make a name for myself to where when they see me, they they think of a guy like Dennis or like Tom that they know they're going to see a show tonight. You know, if, if, if that guy can go out and that truck stays together, they're going to see a show. And so that's my goal. Being a man in, the, in monster trucks, you have to be tough. Being a woman in monster trucks, you have to be 10 times tougher than any man. And they do pick on me being the little girl. And I think it's more because I'm young as well. I'm only 20, so they're, oh, she's a little girl. But I think that I've earned my respect from the drivers, you know? The more wins that I take on, the better I do each year, each show even. You know, I earn respect each weekend. But it is very tough being a chick in the sport. But I think I've handled myself very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Some Monster Jam trucks have superhero personas, and drivers like Chad Fortune of Superman and John Seasock of Batman take their driving duties seriously. If you're gonna save it during racing, then you might as well go out there and tear it up during, during freestyle. We'll fix it and we'll get it back for the next week. The truck works great, which is my crew. I mean, I, got, I get all the glory. I sit there, hold the wheel, I get all the credit, but they're the ones that deserve it. You know, it, the truck is awesome. I mean, there's nothing in the country that looks like it, nothing in the world that looks like it. And uh, to be able to drive that thing, is, is, I'm proud, I'm honored. Monster Mutt and Monster Mutt Dalmatian are crowd favorites at every show. Make no mistake, these dogs can bite as well as they bark. Ah, racing's one thing, man, but you know, there's nothing like freestyle. I love to see a guy go out with a truck Every truck has got their different characteristics and every driver's got his own style. That, to me, that's driving. When you can go out there and finesse it around, pull off some stuff, that's cool, that's driving. Other drivers who have earned superstar status include Don Creighton, driver of the newly rebuilt truck Scarlet Bandit. She's crushed every stereotype ever associated with women drivers. Meanwhile, Pablo Huffaker is not only an amazing driver, he's an engineer who's got to be credited with a lot of the performance, safety, and durability of the modern monster truck. However, when it comes to rivals, Tom Menz in Maximum Destruction is on everyone's list. I'm a racer for a living, that's cool. I mean, it didn't take me too long to get to where I needed to be, you know, because I felt like I've been driving a monster truck all my life, you know? I mean, I was there when the first trucks ever came out, just a small, you know, town kid from the little town of Paxton, Illinois, and I just always wanted to do it, you know? I mean, it was really cool for me to be able to get the opportunity, not having much money, and it was like it was my one shot to the top. And I had to grab hold and give it all I had. The driver has to be in tune with his truck as far as repairs, working on them, actually knowing what the machine can and cannot do, and to be able to get it fixed up to top quality each week. I mean, I do a ton of work on my own vehicle, and that'll probably never change. 
Sick air right off the bat. The, the only roof. truck that cleared that double. Tom knows how to put on the show. He goes out there and he destroys as much as he can. Even when his truck gets ruined, he keeps going. He doesn't stop till it's done. Tom still flying straight up. Over she goes again. Oh, my! He put her back down. Yes! Tom Mitz! Maximum destruction! Absolutely love the fans. I mean, the cool thing about it is I was a fan first. I mean, I went to certain drivers when I was a young kid, like 10 years old, and they didn't give that interaction to me. And I walked away feeling a little bit, you know, shorted and cheapened. And I don't want anybody to feel that way when they come to see me and they come up and say, Tom, we're here to see you. That means a lot to me. That really hits me hard in the core. And I want to make sure that they walk away with that special experience. Stay with us. Up next, we've got the biggest jumps, crashes, and carnage after this message and a word from your local station. CBS. Monster Jam fans are the most loyal to be found anywhere in motorsports. I'm from Ontario, California. Fresno, California. I'm from Green River, Wyoming. We live in uh, L.A. What you need to Portland, Oregon. He wanted to see the Den Dennis Anderson's 25th anniversary. Everybody's together as families. Severn, Maryland. Michigan. Long Island, New York. There's no monster truck show better than Las Vegas. There's a lot for the kids. You know, the kids love it. Yeah, it's a family event. New Jersey. Illinois. New Orleans. Where family and friends come to meet. Tacoma, Washington. The Bronx, New York. It's an awesome, awesome event, awesome sport. It's so much fun. It's great for the family. It, it's just great all around. It's all about the fans for him. All about the fans. He so, gives so much love to us. Ask any fan what they like about Monster Jam, and the answer is usually simple. Just the absolute destruction that these guys do. I like it when they flip, yeah. So you're thinking, oh, this is going to hurt, you know? And that's when you get it on the ragged edge, and that's what all these fans like to see. Here's little 120-pound me and 10,000 pounds of a monster truck with 1,500 horsepower. I can conquer the world in that thing. You know, I could take over anything I want. I saw an old boat. I was like, I need a boat for the show. It'd be so cool to run over a boat. Driving a monster truck is more like flying in a small plane. If you jump a motorcycle or a four-wheeler, you can control the attitude of that vehicle in the air with the brakes and throttle. We do the same thing with a monster truck. You know, it's not even so much as driving a truck, it's more like flying a truck. point and stab it and hope you come out on top. I mean, you know, we're jumping semi-trailers now. We're jumping tugboats. We're jumping planes. I've seen everything at these shows, and it just gets bigger and bigger every year. I don't know where the sky's the limit, I guess. I don't know. Sometimes the plan will go to hell and just go out there and give it all I can. You're getting big air. A lot of hang time, a lot of time to think about it. Looking down through the floorboards half the time and realizing you're in an ugly situation, it gets it gets pretty hairy on whether you want to throttle it or give that little break and touch in there to make it come out in the end. I take what these fans give me at the pit party. They pump me up by telling me how great they think I am, how excited they are for me and that they want me to do good. I take that energy, put it all on a ball, load it up and we just rock and roll. Go! Over it goes! Over! I'm going for broke when I go out there. Whoa! Whoa! Fire on that horse! Oh! He's over! He's over! Nice finish! Big old exclamation point! Oh, look at 
Coming up next, we'll bring you freestyle highlights from the Monster Jam World Finals. The track layout and course contain some of the largest obstacles ever designed to challenge man and machine. Welcome back to Monster Jam on CBS. The freestyle final that took place in Sam Boyd Stadium was one for the record books. The biggest jumps, obstacles, and airtime ever in a Monster Jam freestyle event. It's not about being perfect. It's about being reckless. It's about tearing stuff up. Oh, he goes over. Onto the rim. Save it, save it, baby. Yeah. Save it. Hit the gas. Hit the hit, gas. Hit the gas. <laughs> ah! there it is. With seven completed freestyle runs done, Lindsey Wank in Iron Outlaw was atop the leaderboard. See the rookie, David Bradshaw. That's where he looks. Look at the leap. I like jumps that, that give us a lot of distance, height, but a lot of forward momentum. I hope there's more room in that Hot Wheels on seat because we're going to have to put another one in there. You got it. Scores 29. He's got 15 seconds left. In oh, hold on, baby. Hit the throttle. Yes, save it. Save it. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. And that will help him build the clock. He's got 10 seconds left. I didn't hear you. After seven more runs, the hot seat was crowded as Safe Auto Minimizers Mark McDonald and Air Force Afterburners Damon Bradshaw were tied with Lindsey Wank. Oh, straight up. Oh, he almost backflipped it. Can he keep it up? Yes. Now he's going big time. Oh, time goes and over. Wow. Probably. Uh, this is a nice move. Got to cut the middle and get into the. Oh! Back tires. Yes. Let's go. Save it, baby. Save it. Hold it. Oh, oh, oh. You know, years ago, the freestyle, we done it for the fans. Now, there's money and points in it just like anything else. Spectacular anyway. Got a long dart of it, and it comes out with a little face. Oh, look at him walking. Look at him walking. Then, Pablo Huffaker and the brand new pirate-themed monster, Captain's Curse, put together a run worthy of 34 points and claimed the hot seat. The final seven drivers would have to go big to dethrone him. Here goes the Avenger. Like right there. It's showtime. It's showtime. Oh, no. Oh, look at this. Oh! Oh, look at that. After four months out of the truck due to injury, Dennis was anxious to put on a show at the World Finals for his fans. You know, I've had this malfunction with my hand, my wrist. The silver anniversary for Ray Baker and Dennis Anderson. This is his first freestyle basically a year as he sheared the body. Oh, yeah! I just got to ride it for the best I can ride, you know? Into 90 seconds, like with everybody else. Oh! Oh! Rolls it! Saves it! Three bigger than a 30. We'll move into second place. I did amazing stuff there last year. I've won eight out of the 16 contests there, so I'm 50%. Here we go! That's how you get over it. Sick air right off the bat. He still impresses the judges when you do things the others did. And he is here to Oh, 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 oh what air! Watch this rear right here, because that thing is just going to snap right in the middle. How high is he right there? He must be 40, 50 feet in the air. I've never seen a rear differential snap right in the middle of the housing. That is incredible. Yeah, 
After some great runs by Gravedigger and Maximum Destruction, Pablo still owned the hot seat and was crowned the 2007 World Freestyle Champion. I'm on fire, man! This is the greatest night of my career, and I've been doing this for over 25 years. Never thought I'd make it to the dang winner's circle at the World Championship here. I've struggled for many years, so this is great. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll explore the future of Monster Jam and a special Gravedigger 25th anniversary celebration. Welcome back to Monster Jam on CBS. Monster Jam is sweeping the world, attracting sold out audiences everywhere, including a European tour now in its third year. The popularity of Gravedigger, Maximum Destruction, and the other Monster Jam superstars is only the beginning of a sport enjoyed by fans of all ages. Monster Jam is the most accessible and most fan and family value friendly motorsport in the world. In 10 years, I'm, honestly, I don't know. I can, really cannot predict it. I always thought and wondered, where, where is it going to go? Are we going to keep elevating this thing? Where everybody's thinking different new ways of making the trucks fly higher, um, farther, faster, and safer. Helmet restraints, um, helmet collars, uh, harnesses that hold us in the truck, uh, and shock technology. Oh, it's hard to say where the future's going. I never would believe that we'd be hitting obstacles like this. I remember when I first started, Seven years ago, hitting a van was a big deal, and now we've got uh, school buses stacked on top of, uh, you know, ten pile of dirt or ten foot pile of dirt. You know, it's getting to the point where stadiums can't harness what we want to give them now. So it's it's, it's very cool. We're we're getting up there as far as, um, you know, truck strength. You know, they're breaking parts because we're we're sending a ten thousand pound machine, twenty five feet in the air, and when those things come down, they come down hard. So, it, you know, the trucks are getting stronger. We're we're doing more to upgrade the quality of parts. So the trucks can put up with uh, the more and more abuse we give them every show. Yeah, it's on the drawing board, but we're looking at an independent suspension truck. Uh, I definitely foresee that as the future. Uh, when that comes around, you're going to see a whole other ball game of racing. Yeah, well, here's the deal. You get that thing and you get independent suspension on it, you, it'll look like you're so out of control, but you're so in control with the thing. It's like throwing a big wad of putty on the floor. It's not going to bounce. It's not going to go anywhere. You can drive that thing way over the edge. Well, I want to see it, you know, get bigger. I mean, it's just crazy. I was thinking last year that we couldn't get a better fan following. The buildings couldn't be any more sold out than they were, but it surprised me this year. I mean, buildings that sold out last year on Friday are now selling out on Thursday, and buildings that never sold out before are selling out. I mean, it's amazing. Capacity crowd of Monster Jam fans who this year again came from all 50 states, eight Canadian provinces, and 12 foreign countries were treated to a special Grave Digger encore. Every fan in Sam Boyd Stadium was on their feet and screaming from start to finish. Dennis Anderson and Grave Digger's 25th anniversary won't soon be forgotten by any who saw the incredible show. We hope you enjoyed Monster Jam on CBS. Be sure to look for a Monster Jam event coming to a city near you. So long from Las Vegas. I was blown away. What could I say? It all seemed to make sense You're taking away everything And I can't deal with that I try to see the good in life But good things in life are hard to find We'll blow it away, blow it away Can we make this something
get tamed and I cannot wait. We're wasting too much time being strong, holding on. Can't let it bring us down. My life with you means everything. So I won't give up that easily. I blow it away. Some misunderstood.